Hey everybody, thanks for watching Be Better Golf. This is my favorite vlog that I've done so far, I think. It's just a lot of fun. And the golf course is the nicest golf course I've ever vlogged at. Let's check it out inside first. This was uh, really impressed me. That's my foot, this is me trying to get a cool shot. Some really cool uh, paintings inside of famous golf holes. The, really, I didn't get to capture much of this interior. It was unbelievable here at Old Waverly Golf Club. So uh, this is it. So let's get right into it. You guys can kind of get the feel for it as we play. So the first hole is there's water to the right near the approach, but uh, not that tough of a landing area. Nicely contoured fairway. I was out here in Mississippi. This is uh, the top ranked course in Mississippi. I was out here filming for The Source of Power, which is actually out now. It's out live right now. Good drive down the, actually right in the center. And uh, there's Tony Lutzak, who I came to Mississippi to see, to film for Be Better Golf and The Source of Power. You can see, if you know Tony's philosophy about his swing, there's our Ghetto Pro Tracer, he had a perfect shot. If you know his philosophy about his swing as far as somewhat of a front wheel drive motion, very led by the right arm. It really makes sense when you see what he's doing. Ooh. Okay. I don't want the wind to carry it. I tried to flight mine Keep down. Little, uh, yeah. um, so spin wise, I'm, I spin the ball. I come in yeah. real shallow and try to spin it, but I'm coming in a little bit lower. So again, yeah, you're about mid green. Uh, on, these, on this type of speed, I'd, I'd probably come up about like two thirds, hit, check and let it release. So I asked Tony his advice on how far back I should carry this ball. Here, this is 105 yards. No, I'm sorry, I'm checking my book here. It's actually just 90 yards. I like that trajectory. Both of us just threw it up there too far. Yeah. This grass is different from California. Like It grabs your club and it goes nowhere. Right. Yeah. Tony has a great YouTube channel you guys should subscribe to. And on his YouTube channel, he talks about if you swing your wedges a little bit too far from the inside, you might hit it slightly fat, and I think that's what I did there, which took the spin off the ball and jumped off the back, so that's for birdie. Right, Par for I'm me. I'm trying to be more positive about, about my golf game and say, like, oh, I don't do this well, I don't do that well, I don't do that well. I am a good putter, though, and I'll keep, I keep telling myself I love putting, I love putting, I love sure. putting, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like going up to shoot a free throw. Yeah. Ooh, I hope I don't miss this. Yeah, yeah. It's not good. Yeah. good. Everything, every putt's makeable. Even though the percentages come down. Yeah. Every putt's makeable. I've, and I tried to demonstrate this one time. I mean, some of this is luck. I did this once. Air five greens. Yeah. Six birdies in a row. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and it was just. It doesn't happen every time, but that was, it was funny because we were talking about that in the shop, and I said, well, let's go play nine holes, and we ran off six birds. Some of them were pretty long, too. I saw yours stay out there. Yeah, no problem. It's just belief system. You can see Tony uses that directed force putter that Monty uses as well. All right, going to the second hole, par five, long par five. Uh, from the way back tees, it is 600 yards. Or you can just kind of work it off these small pines and then straight, then it kind of just veers off to your right. No real trouble though, huh? I mean, there's trouble wide, but yeah, not. But not really. Okay, so Tony's going to hit this drive. We'll check out his swing a little bit more in detail later, but he is trying to get in this throwing position and then use the right arm to well, throw it down. that is perfect. Now, perfect Tony, drive. are you um, trying to shape the ball normally, or are you pr predominantly trying just to hit it straight? Straight. I'm a straight guy. Yeah. I can. I swing. I adjust my swing direction to create ball flight. Okay, yeah. I don't try to change my swing, so I try to produce one swing, change alignments to produce all my right. shots. So you're only really trying to shape the ball when you're working out of trouble or No, it depends like on that. hole placement. Okay. Yeah. You know, so if we got everything's let's say pins left, mm -hmm. work it in right to left. Yeah. yeah, I'll go and set up to hit a draw. But it's still always a straight swing. Yeah. Instead of trying to have like thirteen different swings. Yeah. What? One swing I just change positions, ball positions to create all my shots. Yeah. 
right before we shot this, and you see almost every swing I take in this video, I do some flamingo drills before it. We shot for about four or five hours on the range before we came out here to the course. And interestingly, even though we shot for so long on the course, with these fields that we're working on, there is no real paralysis by analysis. Oh, I use that shot chaser app. I'm not a big fan of this thing. Okay, good shot. I think I'll stick with the Ghetto Pro Tracer. It's kind of a pain. And speaking of the Ghetto Pro Tracer, there it is. All right, so Tony has 200 and... He actually has 250 yards, and he has this awesome kind of... This thing he calls his Monster Club. You're going to che check out later. And he hit this 270. He hit it absolutely perfectly, but it flew over everything. Tony's showing us this cool club he has. So this is my monster hybrid. Yeah. So it's my three wood shaft. So it's a long shafted long hybrid. Long shaft. Huh? Yeah. And because of the hybrid. Now the reason why I did it. How many degrees is that? Um, what's it? 18. 18. Plus one? Yeah. yeah. Um, because the lie angle. So for me being six five, I wanted a better, more upright lie angle. Yeah. And fairway woods always bottom off on the toe. This gave me the upright lie. The length gave me back to that three wood. That's cool. So, do you even have a three wood now? No, no. So yeah, because no. a lot of stuff is coming out. The three wood is just like it's t too hard to hit. A lot of people aren't even using I, I it. I think the lie angles are all off. Okay, yeah. They need to be more upright. Okay, so here's my shot. Actually, off the tee, I hit an extremely long drive up the left hand side. And, uh,. But the ball's below my feet, and they tell you that should make the ball go right, but sometimes you can overcompensate. It went through that tree right there, but it got through it extremely clean, and it jumped, 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 got into so this bunker. So I have like a 45-yard bunker shot, and a gotcha. lot of people say there's a hardest shot in golf. How should I play this? I'll take your advice on this one. Um, looking at this, I like the idea. I'm going to probably blast this one up. So you will hit this like a bunker shot. I'm gonna hit this like a bunker shot. I carry two different uh, different wedges. I okay. carry a, a 58 and a 54. So mm -hmm. for me, I'm taking a 54 and splashing it all the way up there. Okay. Now, at the same time, it, depending if you, if all you have is a 56, I would say you're probably not gonna be able to get a 56 there. Well, I have a 54, and you say to keep the face pretty square. Keep it square. Oh, yeah. Come in a little shallower. Kind of kind of like that little flamingo drill feel. And, and just splash it up that way. All right, so you'll see a lot of flamingo drill in this vlog. I'm, I'm flying it right to the green. Oh, okay. These, I get really scared on these long bunker shots and hitting it too clean, you know? Well, that's that's where you just got to kind of commit to, to making a swing to, this, to the, the right depth and yeah. the right speed. Okay. And you just commit and go. And obviously it does take practice. Exactly. It's not just a pure technique. You got to have a lot of feel with it as well. So, there's my 45 yard bunker shot. And see, if you would have just kind of kept going through that shot, instead of like being here, instead of just like, stopping, exactly, you would have been fine. And I'd probably just give it a little bit more speed. Yeah, come through okay. there. Yep. So, for me. All right, so I asked Tony to hit the shot for me. Oh yeah, you're you're swinging much more fully than I am, and that's about five feet. Very good shot. Thanks. But yeah, it's just trusting it. But if I didn't have a 54, I wouldn't do it. Okay, right. A lot of bounce. All right, so back to Tony's actual shot. He hit his monster club, that um, engineered hybrid, huge, that long shafted hybrid, well over this par five green, and he has this chip, and I think he had some kind of lie situation. I didn't see it over there because he had a very poor shot over the green yep. into that bunker. And then this is me, so I'm actually chipping for birdie, so I need to get up and down for par from here. I just, before we filmed this, did the short game lesson with Tim Yelverton. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it paid off. Man, nice. He's going to be happy with you. I know. Well, I'll have to put that at the end of the uh, chipping video. I was doing his move. <laughs> very good. All right, moving on to the par three, third hole. Tony hit it really solidly. Just up the right, just a little bit. So same swing, but you open it up before you start your backswing? Yeah, I just set it open and then take my regular grip. 
and then make my regular swing. Now, does that go against ball flight laws, or no. that's with it? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. What yeah, about your I mean, stance? Because they say that that face direction is the initial, and then swing direction takes it there. Is that that's right? What, that, it's not quite yeah. how it works. Yeah, that's why. Because I was thinking this stuff about you know doesn't really work, even though it says that. Yeah. No. Those are, those are theories. Here we go. All right, so six iron for me. It's 171 yards. Oh, look at this. Pure. Look at this. Shot. Easy. See, that's me in a nutshell, Tony. I am like a 10 handicap or maybe a 15 handicap on the driving range. I'm much better on the golf course, which is the way to be. Right. You know. Yeah. But for some reason, I'm, I'm getting better at being, kind of lowering the volume of the voice. Yeah, so I was just explaining to Tony because during our lesson, I was hitting some bad shots on the range, but uh, like started playing time. really well on the course. We well, got this ridge. See how you got this ridge yeah. coming down? But then, like, but, the hole, it's gonna be but see how it kind of slopes out this way? So it's going to kind of come up and over and a little bit this way. You got kind of a little bit of a double break, it looks like. Left edge, maybe? My left? Um... I, the question is how much, like where my clubs are, how much is that going to influence it from there? I'm, I'm thinking right edge and then a little double break is kind of what I'm seeing. So during this trip, I was walking around telling anyone who would listen what a great putter I was. And now I should come back a little bit. But Who's the caddy? All right. Who can read green? I was green? aiming over here first. Yeah. You fix me. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Awesome birdie there. So back-to-back -back birdies going into the fourth hole. This is a pretty straightforward par four hole. And, uh, yeah, I just love putting on the greens out here. They are uh, very uh, – I'm used to putting on Poana greens, and all you guys from California know they're extremely bumpy. But you see a lot of really good bump, uh, really good putters on tour – grew up on Poana because uh, you just feel like Superman when you get on these greens in the south because they actually don't bump. Awesome drive there. Just a little bit, but that's going to be good. That'll be really, be really pleasant. good. Just faded it perfectly. Be long enough. Okay, so here's Tony. He does not wear a glove on his left hand because he doesn't want to feel like he's pulling with his left whatsoever. The right side is running the show for Tony completely. Yeah, once you hit it long, it gets pretty narrow up there, huh? Yeah, that was a little bit right up where I was. He told me that because I uh, asked him during our Be Better Golf live show if he wanted to use a glove. He was like, no, don't use a glove. Really good shot there. Great shot. Right there. I love the way that sounded, Tony. I'm muted. Okay, so that is my gap wedge that I won in that tournament. One of the uh, one of the things I won in that tournament in Virginia, and I was I had to take the wrap off of it still because this is the first shot I ever hit with this Voki wedge. Love Good it. tempo. That looks a lot better. Take away and everything. Good shot. Well, the wedge is a keeper. Good shot. So Tony, a question I always get from people while Josh is going up and hitting his ball. The question I always get to, from people is, I'm, I'm playing well in the driving range. I'm even playing well with my friends. But then if they want to take it to the next level and play in a tournament, you know, where every shot really counts, even the, you know, two-incher that you weren't concentrating on, how can people kind of avoid, make themselves perform when they really want to? Yeah. You actually need to go backwards. Okay. Meaning your practice and everything you do has to be more tournament-based. So you don't prepare for a tournament, you, you actually are doing your testing beforehand. Okay, yeah. But if that makes sense, the, the practice becomes under pressure, you practice with your friends become under pressure. So then when you play in a tournament, well, you're already used to it. Give me an example of like pra that practice under pressure. Okay, five bucks on this next putt. Okay. You know, gotcha. or whatever it may be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big number. It could be just a dollar, it could mm -hmm. be a quarter, whatever yep. it is. Something to put, get yep. that, that, 
that inside of you that those bugs churning in your stomach mm -hmm. you know type type of feeling those nerves to, yep. because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have those everyone has them all the tour players have them. it's how you think and how you adjust to manage that those yep. thoughts and those feelings so the more you can do it in practice mm. the more deliberate you can be in practice more structured you can be in practice and when you play with your friends the tournament will be a piece of cake yep all right so this after that great wedge shot is for three birdies in a row, and this is to go three under. And I was talking to Tony about having, uh, getting to three under. He started talking about some of the different mental things about it, and I really, really was 100% fully grinding on this and uh, also declaring what a good putter I was to everybody because it kind of convinces yourself that it's true. I thought I blocked it. Stop oh. complaining! Woo! Turkey! <laughs> All right. Here. Thank you. Yeah, that's three in a row. Yeah, that's three in a row. Awesome. So here's Tony for a birdie of his own. This putt, whether it's for birdie or double bogey, do, mechanically I don't have to do anything different to make this putt. So yeah. when we put value or we put an outcome on a shot, we're not focusing on what we have to do to achieve the shot. So yeah. when pros talk about, well, it's one shot at a time, yeah. well, that, well, how do you do that? First of all, there is no such thing as good or bad shot in golf. Every shot you execute was executed perfectly. A cold top is a perfectly executed top shot. Hard to feel like that though, yeah, yeah. But, but it was, so yeah. that means just the mechanics weren't right. Something glitched in the system. Like they said, the ball is a perfect computer. It tells you exactly what happened. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So with this, and, and that's the reason why three in a row, or five in a row, or 10 in a row, is all possible. As long as you're focused in, uh, what do I have to do to make this putt? In this, this very moment. Yeah. In this very moment. Yeah. So there, there's this, um, I guess, uh, I call it kind of what uh, Dr. Tina Garrison and I came up with. It's called game. Okay. It's a goal of your shot, awareness or assessment of what we have to do. Yeah. What do you have to do mentally? What's your mental program to execute that? Okay. Then execute it. Yeah. Then after that, you can evaluate it. And that sounds like something you have to practice those game things on the practice screen so that you can do it pretty quickly on, on the course. Exactly. Right. And that's the idea we talked about was getting yourself in the habit of practicing. Your practice rounds are really tournament rounds. Okay. Yeah. And then so then the tournament becomes, well, that's nothing. So your practice becomes more deliberate. Well, to put some pressure on you, Tony, all that talk means absolutely nothing if you don't make this putt. Exactly. thing about all the putts that have gone in for me oh, on this day where, and I was giving Tony a little bit of grief, the thing about uh, all the putts that had gone in for me this day were totally in good all mess. the edges. I, I saved it. I felt yeah. this and then I did that to keep it. Which but I'll is take good, it anyway. Good move. Club awareness. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and good club awareness of feeling where the club was. And that is the thing I can say about having a more front wheel drive swing. You have good awareness of where the club is in space rather than when it's trimmed. All right, 132. I have a lot of club here, but I, I'm kind of feeling like I want to control this in there. Yeah, 132 after a really good drive because uh, it cut back to, right to where I wanted it, even though it didn't go super far. All right, that's good enough. Yeah, that's a good yeah. shot. Got some distance right. left though. Just put it into the ground a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. About 35 feet for me. So let's check out Tony's iron swing here in slow motion. Now in the back swing, he has a certain takeaway move that he's really trying to do. And from there, he gets it set at the top and he's really throwing with the right hand. A real throwing feel motion. And Tony hit a good shot up onto the green. This is for a record, Tony. I haven't had four of Oh, uh, we're we're gonna shoot for six, man. This is this is a given. This one. Like I say, I am a very good putter. That's where it starts. If you get the right speed, the right line, ball will go in the hole. Yeah, I was like a broken record with everybody, telling everyone I am a good putter, but the putts kept going in, so I kept doing it. Uh, moved a little right on you. Yeah, yeah, off this slope right here. Yeah. 
Good roll, though. Yep, good roll. I love these greens. Very different. All right, Tony, for his second birdie in a row. Tony, so give me your philosophy, like, if, if we're playing and people, like, a lot, a lot of people have a hard time with these length putts, you know. What are you thinking about on this kind of putt? See, I think, I think they're looking at maybe a value. Oh, okay. I just missed my birdie putt. Like, I ran that one by. Yeah. So they're still in the mindset of what I did before. Yeah. So now they may over adjust. So what I've seen is most people will leave this putt short. Oh, okay. They're trying to be so perfect. So they perfect. Don't hit it. Yeah. And the last putt they hit was downhill. But now it was because downhill I misjudged the speed. I hit it too hard. Now I got to go back uphill. Mm -hmm. And uphill and downhill putts react differently also on the break. Yeah. So, so hit each putt and each shot like its own little universe. Like don't connect other things to it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, this, this putt is, this ball's only going to respond to what I need to do with it. You said people usually leave it short, <laughs> but that wasn't short. That wasn't short. That wasn't short. It's a round hole. Now, do you do you like that? Like, because some people really say they really like die speed because die speed opens up the the edges more. Yeah, I don't I don't look at it as die speed, but yes, I understand with why they say that. Yeah. There's a speed, the ball. I want to maximize this. Uh, I've heard Phil Rogers call it the four corners of the hole. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Where all, so that right speed, proper speed, creates. The whole hole with the hole for the ball to go in. I yeah. also know Dave Powell's in his philosophy, the, and I understand it. Yeah. The lumpy donut, the whole thing. Yeah. It's based on old traditional greens. Okay. They were wet. Columbia Country Club greens were wet. Mm -hmm. People walking around. So I, I get that. We're at a different time today, so things are flat. Maximize the width of the hole, right speed, whether you call it diet, follow it in, however. Right. All right, going to the sixth hole, I must mention. Dr. Josh, who was with us and really helped me during this entire thing. This is a very, very difficult hole. For me, anyway, on the card, it's not that tough. But Tony hit a great. Up the right-hand side, hit like, I think that's a three iron. I'm not that's sure. three iron? That's a nice three hybrid. So I carried that about 200. We are into the wind a little bit, so get, get 230 shot and you'll be fine. Two thirds. This is... Okay, so I put hybrid away and took out the three wood, and that was probably a mistake because I had some doubt in my mind. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, God. Topped it just in front, just past the lady stick. So. I'll be able to play it, but you can see that is half a top and half a shank. Really disappointing. Pretty crowded there. All right, so you guys saw I was a, uh, a major top off the tee, but then I hit a good recovery shot out of the uh, thick rough to be here. So the main thing here, Tony, is just to hit this 135 yard shot just for in its, itself, right? Mm -hmm. Not try to get up and down really desperately to make par. No, I mean, yeah. if you, no, it's every shot is played as its own shot. All right, trying to get in perspective here and get back to the feels I've been working on, little flamingo feel here. And, and I remember thinking, okay, I'm three under. So obviously I'm playing well. Don't let one shot it's going, define everything. All right, won't kill me, it's on, but... So I'm on the green. I actually have a putt at a par, so that's not too bad. Love that rhythm Tony has. Great balance on that one, too. In between clubs there. What do you do usually when somebody's trying to build like distance control for leg putting? Uh, the drill I like to use is actually looking at your target while you're making your putting stroke. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like throwing a ball. You're not looking at your hand or the object, you're looking at your target. I like getting all this putting advice into a vlog because I can tell from the metrics on YouTube how little people care about putting. So it's nice to put some putting stuff in here. I blasted that one by. Yeah. That's because that's, when, it's not like you get a practice throw. You just look at your target and go. Tony was saying that eventually he'd like to see me hit my putts without making any practice swings. Good part. <laughs> okay, so we're going on to a 199 yard Par three, beautiful hole, little creek running through there. And you can tell it's starting to get a little dark. 
face was a little closed on that one for Tony. Just he actually landed on the green and then rolled off into the fringe. Flamingo feel for me. I'm trying to be aggressive with that right arm. Dead straight, just a little short of the green. Yeah. You talk about arms first, Tony. Are you doing arms first in the in this kind of thing, or it's this not is really more together. not as active, yeah. Yeah, because we're we're talking about down here. So when we talk about arms first, that's in transition from here to here. Yeah. And then through impact, it's our body and right. club, everything together. So oh, since is, you're not taking such a long backswing, it, you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, exactly. Much, yeah. So this is kind of more of a an everything, arms, body, club together. Um, not we don't break it out because it's just not the speed required of it. So you gotta show this to Tim and let me know if I'm doing it right. All right. Tim Yelverton, the guy I did that short game video with, is a good friend of Tony's. Oh, oh you missed it by a foot. All right, so here, here is my chip. Two under par, so I really wanna execute this good short game shot. So for me, a good, good chipping is really reliant on a good backswing, and that one was good. I got my arm and the shaft lined up my right arm that is okay so moving on to the eighth hole this is a long I think about 465 yard par four and this day it was into the wind just a little bit so uh, Tony off the tee so watch how Tony's lined up he has a very interesting theory I hope to get into more late later about alignment this one went to the right and it cut to the right and cut in play but and that's alignment right there that causes that. You think you were you were a little shut? Yeah, I know I was. So as Tony says he knows he was shut. So if we look at his alignment there, you can see for Tony, this is shut. Absolutely. Now, this is based on his theory of alignment that the further out you're aiming, so the more left you need to aim. So if you're aiming 300 yards, you need to aim a lot more left than if you're aimed just to 50 yards. That's my understanding anyway. So I couldn't get to my target. So being a little, being lined up a little wrong can also make the ball curve as well. Yeah, definitely. Because you feel that you're lined up to the right and then you try to swing left to correct it. Correct. And that gives you a... Over the top okay. move. Yeah, so a misalignment causes a lot of swing issues. That's where it originates from generally. So if Tony felt like he was aimed right, and he unconsciously swung a little left. That was a, then became an outside in path, which sliced it. So that's it. that's the idea. That was an awesome Good ball. Pass. Really great one. Really aggressive with that right arm. 231 to the hole. Yeah. Over some junk. Yeah, but I think I can kind of cut it up over it. This is a shot. It's gonna be really work out nice if it sits down there. Tony ended up just left, just in front of those woods. He was about uh, 40 yards from the green. He ended up making bogey. So here I go. Watch my takeaway here. That's what I need to work on. But the strike was great. Good strike. Yeah. Go. Good shot. Oh yeah. Okay, I'll get more into the takeaway later, but basically the takeaway I'm trying to have in my full swing is the takeaway that Tim Yelverton was talking about in that short game horse video that I did with him. And there's different feels and ways to do that. So this would be to go back to three under. Oh, you dog, go. That was for <laughs> three under. All right, going into the final hole of this vlog, the ninth hole, which aims right at the beautiful amazing clubhouse that they have at Old Waverly. So, a uh, really beautiful setting. Uh, straight away, you got the big clubhouse to the left out there. Okay. You got the small shop to the right. There's the green straight away, so. Go at the shop. Go right at the shop. That blinking light, huh? Yep. All right, so I had a great aiming point here. Now I wanted to set up a great feel with that. So I'm more trying over the ball to get a really good feel for how I want to hit it rather than 
anything technical. I want to be very technical about my feel. If that makes sense. Perfect. Great shot. Nice little draw. Excellent. So very specific about my feel and uh, trying not to put it into words. I like the tempo of this one. Yep, I'm trying to get that throwing motion with the right arm. They're not bad because the pin's right behind them. Yep. Well, that's not a bad spot to be. All right, little, yet again, another uh, tiny flamingo feel. All right, speaking of alignment, so if this is supposed to go 260 or 270 yards, you can see I am aimed way too far to the right for that shot. But luckily, I didn't compensate for it. And I just hit right where you're lined up. Right. I was a little stuck. Yep. So looking at that, I mean, that was a nice straight shot right there. Okay. Just got to work on alignment. So here's a uh, Tony swing in slow motion again. Good backswing. He's getting into that really strong position at the top, and then it's all go from the top. No stops on the way down. <laughs> and then check this out: the club twirl. At the very end, a little slow motion club twirl. Ninth hole at Old Waverly. What do you have, Tony? 64 yards. 64 yards. They're really beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, Tony, for setting oh, this up. You're welcome. It's, it's really Greg cool. Greg and Chris, and obviously Tim Vizek, and they takes care of us. Yeah, thanks a ton to the guys at Old Waverly for having us out. This was really an amazing treat to get on this course. I'll pull it. Yeah, I pulled it a little bit. How do you get your players to develop feel for like, you know, tweener wedges? It's practice. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of variety practice. Yeah. Meaning 20 yards, 30 yards, then 100 yards. And then yeah. mixing them up to a lot. You're of certainly practice. not having them like do 40 shots from 30 yards, 40 shots. You're right. You go this way, that way, yeah, all around. Change it up in the mm -hmm. feel. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't mind the pals if you want to do a clock or whatever. Yeah. For me, it's, it's can, can you control constant speed through impact? Yeah. Not acceleration, but mm -hmm. constant speed through impact we try to feel. And there's just no shortcut to developing that other than just Practice practicing it. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so two really good shots. Gives me this chance to go up and down for birdie. That was a, kind of a poor chip, though. That was a little float loady and stabby, if you know what I mean. So here's Tony for his birdie. And you can see, once it hit that ridge, just zoom. It just ran on completely. All right, so here's for birdie. So this would be to shoot three under, 33. And this is not an easy golf course. So I would really like to have this one. Good line, not enough break. Good roll. Yeah, good nine though. Yeah, very good nine though for me. 34, two under. Then we went on, you can see how dark it was. We went on and we played four more holes, which I went par, 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 and made a birdie on the famous 18th hole, which was awesome in the darkness. Thank, thank you. My pleasure. That was a lot of fun. And uh, so let's kind of recap what I learned today, is uh, really not to be afraid of, of swinging fast. Right. Yeah. And uh, I think that really is the, the main key to this. And also, so it's like a blend of speed and control. I think that's really the key to golf. So, um, thanks a lot. Hey, if you guys are interested uh, and you have any direct questions for Tony, email him. What's the email? You can go repsgolf at gmail.com or tonyluzak at uh, gmail.com. And uh, go to Tony's YouTube page. It's linked below. I think you're going to really like the content over there. I want to tell you guys all about this thing that I have on Be Better Golf video called The Source of Power. Tony and Bobby and Monty and maybe even some others, and myself included, are all involved in really this in-depth discussions and kind of documentary about how power is really created. And uh, I think, what did you, how did you feel about our discussion about it today? Earlier? I, I think it went well. Yeah. I think it went well. I don't think it got too scientific, but the yeah. scientific basis kind of supported what, why we do what we do. Very in-depth, but actionable advice to get you swinging faster and uh, playing better golf. Check it out. It's called The Source of Power. The link is in the description. See you later.